Frequently asked questions about growing up in a cult. Here we go. Hi everyone, if you are a Grassy Posse member or a pornographer who just recently subscribed and joined and helped me get over that 1,000 sub mark, thank you guys so much. You freaking rock. Actually, Tom's gonna be here in like a week. I have to go get the guest room ready for him and change those bed sheets. <laughs> I'm really excited for today's video because it's the most frequently asked questions I get when I tell people I was born in a cult. Okay, the first one I usually get is, who was the leader? So the cult was called Church Universal and Triumphant, otherwise known as CUT, and it was led by a woman named Elizabeth Clare Prophet. How convenient of a name. To everyone in the community and all of the cult followers, she was known as the mother. That's what everyone called her. All right, so Elizabeth's whole dogma and really the church's dogma was that in order to reach Christhood, you had to be as close as you could to her and to the daily teachings that she was prophesizing. She was a self-appointed prophet, meaning she believed that she communicate with God directly with multiple gods. She could write their word, speak their words, um, and religion-wise, it was really a mix of Eastern, a lot of Eastern and Western faiths. There was Buddhism, Christianity, um, there's a lot of mysticism and alchemy in there. Kind of a crazy fact that I recently discovered was that in like the late 50s, Elizabeth Clare Prophet interned at the United Nations under a photographer which is kind of crazy because I interned at the United Nations under a videographer in Rome, Italy. Next question, where did you live? All right, so I was born in a teeny tiny midwife's cabin outside of Livingston, Montana. At that time, everyone was really living on the land that the mother had purchased for everyone to be working and living off of in between the construction of the bomb shelters, which I'll get to later. So all the families of the community, we were, we all basically lived in these trail in, in on trailer parks, in these double wides, and the double wide trailers had actually been purchased from the Rajneeshis. I, if any of you watched that documentary on Netflix a few years ago, um, the Rajneeshi were a cult community that were living in Oregon, and when that sort of collapsed and started to fall apart. Elizabeth Clare Prophet purchased a bunch of those um, assets basically that they had and brought them over to Montana for us. <laughs> so I love to always joke that I'm a trailer park kid, born in a cult, ended up in Italy, LA, and am just doing fine. Okay, I do get this next one a lot actually. Were your parents hippies slash did they do drugs? <laughs> All right, so Contrary to a lot of cult stigmas, the answer here is no. Many of the followers had all graduated from secondary levels of education or higher before they left it all behind and joined CUT. My mom had gotten her BA in English from Wittenberg University in Ohio when she went to her first religious summit that was hosted by Claire Prophet and where she then met my father. Now, the second part of the question, my dad might have dabbled a little bit. I mean, he was born and raised in Venice, California. He looked like this and he played guitar. You know, sometimes I interpret the question, well, were they hippies? Did they do drugs? As, well, why did they join the cult? Where the church started and what my parents joined was very, very different than where it ended up. And so what got what took them in there was very different than what helped get them out. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Next question, were there any weird restrictions? So I remember we weren't allowed to wear red or black. My mom says orange too. Diet wise, there's a lot of macrobiotic stuff. So very little meat, lots of vegetables. Most of the meals that we ate as a community or as a family um, in the trailer parks were all prepared at like the headquarters of the church and then brought back for lunch and dinners um, for the community to have like back in the trailer parks. Other things, oh yeah, there was absolutely no rock music, like no cursing, no alcohol, no drugs. Um, there was no TV, no sugar, no garlic. What was the craziest part? The bomb shelters were probably the most dramatic and, and craziest part from the outside looking in and from the in looking out. Um, it was a long process. It was a thoughtful process. It took time. It took a lot of money. There were weapons that were filled inside of it, weapons that were purchased with deceased people's IDs out of state. Um, so there was a lot of sketchy shit that was going on at that time. And the adults were treated really badly by the leadership and by Elizabeth Clare Prophet and the lifestyle that was demanded of families of my parents, people with young children, um, 
just an inappropriate and blatant misuse of power and influence. Do you remember it? I definitely remember being there. I was born and raised in it until I was eight years old. So um, my whole childhood, you know, all my, my whole childhood was spent there. And, you know, I talk about this in my first video, but, um, you know, from a, from a child's perspective of being in this particular cult, um, you know, we were sheltered, I will say, I think, from a lot of some of the sinister stuff that was going on behind the scenes. Not so much behind the scenes, <clears throat> but like on stage. When we went down into the bomb shelter, I was about two years old, so I, I really don't remember... I really don't remember it a lot. I, I, I remember like some images. We went back down when I was older just to like look at it again. So I, I can't remember in my, I'm not sure if my memories are from the original time we went down or if they're from like when I was six or seven. Um, does the cult still exist today? People never expect me to answer yes to this question, but it actually does still exist. It's currently run by a board of directors ever since Elizabeth Clare Prophet was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 1998, and then she died in 2009. Why did your parents leave? Well, after everyone spent several years building these giant bomb shelters, filling them with weapons and food and people, we all went down waiting for the end of the world to happen. And when they all came up the next morning and nothing had changed, that was sort of the beginning of the end. And I don't really remember my parents talking a lot about the decision to leave the cult. Um, it was kind of like a quiet exit. Do you remember it? I definitely remember being there. I was born and raised in it until I was eight years old. So um, my whole childhood, you know, all my, my whole childhood was spent there. And, you know, I talk about this in my first video, but, um, you know, from a, from a child's perspective of being in this particular cult, um, you know, we were sheltered, I will say, I think, from a lot of some of the sinister stuff that was going on behind the scenes. Not so much behind the scenes, <clears throat> but like on stage. When we went down into the bomb shelter, I was about two years old, so I, I really don't remember, I really don't remember it a lot. I, I, I remember like some images. We went back down when I was older just to like look at it again, so I, I can't remember in my, I'm not sure if my memories are from the original time we went down or if they're from like when I was six or seven. Um, the last question I get a lot is, do you think your parents regret joining it? I, and I can't answer for them whether they regret it or not. I, this is just my take based off our conversations and me knowing them for the last 34 years. Um, they've both dealt with it in their own ways since they've left the church. And um, they've gone on to lead really like successful, social and meaningful lives in Oregon. So I'm really proud that they entered something for reasons I can understand and left something for reasons I wholeheartedly understand and appreciate. It's also really hard for me to think about spending that chunk of your life, right? Like 18, 19 to 30 under the influence of, you know, a, a tyrannical sort of delusional um, woman who was abusing her power in many, many ways for many, many years and abusing people. Being that age for me in my life, 20s to 30s was the most formative time of my life. That's where I found my professional identity, my self-identity, my familial identity. And knowing my parents did not have that ability because they were stuck in this situation, that's that's hard. Like I have, reg I regret that they had to stay there for so long, but I also understand that they were, that we were, many people were stuck. You worked for the church, you lived for the church, you had no funds coming in. They were cut you off from many of, from your family. They cut you off from the people outside of Montana. And so it took a lot of planning in the background for my dad and my mom to even get to Portland. Um, and then of course, once we got to Portland, we had a whole new life. We had a, I had my sibling and it's just been great. All right, I think that is going to conclude us for today. I had a lot of fun with this one. I feel like I could do a bunch more of these, but I didn't want to go like too in depth today. I like that this is kind of just a casual format to like give more information about the cult. If you've made it this far and you're still watching, please drop me a peace sign in the comments. Thank you so freaking much for watching and joining and just being here. Please subscribe, check out my original video called Growing Up in a Cult, and let me know other stuff that you guys um, think I should talk about. Bye!